Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm trying to give a chance to people to join in, and it's five. Ready? One minute, and we will start. If you guys have any friends who are planning on joining, please give them a heads up. Okay, I think we can start now. Um, the session is already live on Facebook and we are recording the session to upload it to YouTube later on so people can um, watch today's session later on. Is my voice clear enough? Can someone let me know in the chat box? Okay, brilliant. If the voice is cutting up, it might be from your end, Shahid. Please check your connection. Okay, so to begin with, giving you a little briefing on Education USA. First of all, my name is Walid Mustafa Al Tarabulsi. I work as an Education USA advisor at Amir East in Egypt. Um, Education USA, we're a network of educational advisors across uh, the world. We're located in more than 100 countries and more than 400 centers worldwide. Here in Egypt, we're located in two places. We're located in uh, Amir East in Cairo, in Do'i, and in Alexandria as well, uh, Farana Street. And in Cairo, it is myself and Mrs. Yasmin Rouini. In Alexandria, it's Ms. Heba Abu Khalifa, there to help you with anything related to ed higher education in USA. And today, we have a specific topic with a specific university, both are extremely prestigious. We have uh, engineering studies to talk about today with the help of New York University's Tandon School of Engineering. And we have a guest speaker today, Professor Mohsen Hussain, uh, who is a professor of engineering at uh, the school itself, here to talk to you about engineering as well with Mr. Corey Cottingham who is the Assistant Director for Graduate Admission at Tandon School of Engineering as well to talk about the application process. And um, we are all here together to answer your question towards the end. So without further ado, I can stop sharing my screen. And gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Waleed. And, uh... For organizing this and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, can you all please let me know if you can see uh, the slides there? We can see it perfectly, yes. W wonderful. Um, so let me go ahead and get started just one moment. So uh, as Walid mentioned earlier, my name is Corey Cottingham. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Graduate Admission. So um, anyone who's interested in a master's or PhD program at the Tandon School of Engineering of New York University, uh, my office would be the people who are going to assist you. And so I'm going to give a general overview of uh, the school, uh, NYU Tandon, as well as some of the programs that we do and services that we offer to our students. After that, uh, we're going to be joined by Dr. Mohsen Hossein, who is a professor, an industry professor 
of Civil and Urban Engineering and also the director of uh, the graduate programs in that department. So uh, it should be a treat for you, especially if you are interested in uh, civil and urban engineering and related fields. Uh, Dr. Hossein is an expert and will be able to answer your questions about the admissions process in that uh, department as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin by showing a short video about uh, the Tandon School of Engineering so you can see a little bit of our campus, some of our students, and uh, learn about what we do at the school. And then I'll move into a quick presentation. Our motto at the school is born anywhere made in Brooklyn. And what this means for us is that we're really looking for you all to come from anywhere in the world and really to work together to solve problems of global importance. All the classes here are phenomenal. They always challenge you to use what you already know and connect with people who know something else. At the end of the day, all my classes have focused so much on teamwork that it's really helped me become a better manager. NYU Tandon is great because it really affords us a solid process to look at a problem and to really dive into it, do the research, do the ideation, do the prototyping. NYU Tandon has great facilities for research. They have expert professors and they provide resources and opportunities for students who are pursuing industry careers. NYU is a great place to study because students have an opportunity to be involved in research at the basic translational and clinical levels to address problems that originate from clinicians. So they're real world problems and the students get real world hands-on experience. The labs at NYU are full of equipment and resources that we need. However, it's incredible to also be able to rely on our shared facilities on different research groups that are run by amazing professors. In any educational institution, one of the most important things is the people you meet, the connections you make. And as a student at Tandon, you're among those students who are motivated, inspiring, and have a drive for success. What makes Tandon unique is we have an energetic city. New York is investing in technology. Technology is the second best growing sector uh, here in the city, and I think it's just a great opportunity. You'll find a lot of collaboration between the two campuses. It's really great to be able to go over to Manhattan, learn from those who are studying there, and then be able to come back to a unique sort of atmosphere that's driven in innovation and influenced by the companies that are found here. Brooklyn is the largest growing tech sector in this country. We have four incubators that bring startup companies from somewhere from three to five people to 15 to 20 once they graduate. Three of them are in Brooklyn, one is in Manhattan. Our laboratory component on campus is very strong. We have a maker space that has all kinds of 3D printers apart from a machine shop and also advanced materials characterization facility. We have an area of a maker space called the design lab which is kind of an open co-working space. So that's really the place where a lot of my meetings with students, a lot of the projects we running is taking place. Since last spring we started doing uh, more design research, so building tools and small installation that engage participants within the makerspace and at the same time helps us understand better what they're doing in the space. The graduate students here, they're not in the building all that much because I don't want them to be. I want them out working with clients and working with their ideas in the real world. And Brooklyn is a perfect place to kind of deploy those ideas. Our graduates are really well prepared to go out and work in a variety of different fields. A number of them have gone out to start their own companies. So we want them to succeed in whatever it is they choose to do. And Bayou is a perfect place to expand your personal abilities and explore your professional career. And Bayou Tendon has given me a toolkit to stand strong in New York City. If you want to join NYU Tandon, you just need to be ready to challenge yourself and aim high. To have no limits to what you want to accomplish, and then know that with the effort and with the support of this big community, everything is possible. NYU Tandon School of Engineering is an exciting place to be right now. We have an incredible pool of talented professors, amazing students who will be your friends and colleagues. We have access to incubators and startups and industry in New York City and broader. All together, I am excited to be here and I hope you will be as excited as I am once you join us.
All right, so that video gives you an idea of our campus and a little bit of what we are doing at NYU Tandon. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, that uh, the Tandon School of Engineering is the second oldest private school of engineering, science and technology in the United States. So we do have a long history. Uh, we recently changed our name in 2015 due to a very generous gift from Chandrika and Ranjan Tandon. Uh, which has allowed us to uh, expand our physical plant, to improve our laboratories, hire more faculty, invest more in research, and do a whole host of other things for both our graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, don't take my word for it. I'm not going to go into the full list of innovations and inventions that have come out of NYU Tandon and our uh, community of alumni and professors, but um, there is a whole host of things that have been world-changing um, innovations that have uh, come out of the school, including the barcode scanner, uh, the x-ray, uh, the lunar lander, uh, applying Teflon to metal, and more recently 5G wireless technology, among many other things. So we are uh, a school that has a long history of creating world-changing innovations, and we continue that to the future. <clears throat> I don't want you to consider uh, rankings as the only thing that you're looking at when you are applying to a graduate program, although it is important to know that NYU Tandon is recognized worldwide for the quality of its education. And here you'll see some of our rankings. Uh, U.S. News and World Report ranked NYU as number 28 among best global universities. Uh, NYU Tandon was specifically ranked number 38 among best U.S. engineering schools this last year. Uh, this is an important uh, ranking, I think, because in the last 10 years, NYU Tandon has risen from number 82, I believe, up to number 38. And this is faster than any other U.S. engineering school has risen in these rankings. And so uh, we are a school that is on an upward trajectory, and we do expect that to continue uh, moving forward. Uh, NYU has been ranked number 29 among top universities in the world. The Princeton Review ranked NYU as number four among all uh, thousands of U.S. universities among the schools that students dream of attending. And we've also been ranked number 29 among best national universities in the U.S. So uh, the students who leave NYU, aside from acquiring a great education and professional opportunities, uh, will also be able to perhaps take advantage of the prestige of an institution that is well recognized worldwide. I'm not going to get into uh, too much of the uh, Future Labs information, but we do have four different laboratories on campus uh, that function as entrepreneurial incubators. Uh, so if you do have a business idea that you would like to get off of the ground, our future labs would be a great place for you. Uh, three astronauts are associated with the school, two of whom come back regularly to uh, give talks and meet with our students. More importantly for you as a future graduate student is the 15 to one student to faculty ratio, which means you as a master's or PhD student will be able to have plenty of uh, face time with your professors. Three Nobel Prize winners are associated with NYU Tandon. We have an annual research expenditure of uh, nearly $53 million, and our average class size is 35. Some more numbers for you. Again, we are an engineering school. Uh, total enrollment for the past year was around 5,500 students. Uh, we're about half undergrad and half graduate. Uh, at the Tandon School. So uh, we do have a higher percentage of graduate students than many other universities. And I think uh, the focus of resources toward our graduate programs is reflected in uh, the number of students who we have at the graduate level. Uh, I should explain as well that NYU Tandon is one of about 20 different schools of New York University. Uh, so we're only one of 20 schools, but we are one of the larger schools uh, NYU as a whole has around 60,000 students, making it the largest private nonprofit university in the United States. So within what is a very large university, uh, you will have a bit of a more uh, comfortable home within NYU Tandon. For those of you who are planning on applying uh, to any graduate program in the U.S., you're probably thinking about the GRE, uh, unless you're in the business field. Uh, to give you an idea, most of our graduate programs do uh, request a GRE score. The average verbal score for our students is a 151, and the average uh, quantitative score on the GRE is 164. Again, these are averages and they do vary by program, but to give you an idea of the caliber of student that generally applies and is admitted to NYU Tandon. 
We do require a minimum GPA of 3.0 out of 4.0 uh, on the U.S. scale. Uh, so we will take your Egyptian or wherever else you've studied GPA, grade point average, uh, and convert that into the U.S. system, but we will be looking for a minimum of 3.0. The Tandon School has students from over 60 countries. Uh, NYU as a whole has students from well over 100 different countries and actually has more international students than any other university in the United States with around 19,000 students coming from around the world to join us uh, in 2019. Uh, for those of you wondering how many students who uh, apply are admitted, we have around 38% of selectivity. Uh, so about just over one in three students who apply are admitted. Um, again, on the uh, diversity of our campus and of the university, uh, we were ranked number nine among America's most diverse colleges several years ago. Just this past year, USA Today, which is a major uh, media outlet in the United States, ranked NYU as the second most diverse university out of the thousands in the United States. So you will be joining a community uh, that values and is characterized by a diverse community of students, staff, and administrators. Um, Dr. Hossein later will speak specifically to our programs in civil engineering, but uh, we are a full engineering school that has programs in a number of different areas. So on this page, you'll see the programs that we are currently offering uh, at the Tangent School, there are 31 total. Another thing that characterizes our programs are many of our students who are coming from the New York City area uh, are part-time students or perhaps are working while they study. So this uh, means that we offer classes both in the daytime, in the evening, and on weekends in some cases. So if you, uh, even coming as an international student, want to do uh, an internship, work on campus, or do research during the day, the flexible nature of our class offerings will allow you to do that while still continuing your studies. Now, we have 160 full-time staff members and a global network of NYU alumni of nearly 500,000. I mentioned earlier that we received uh, a, a generous gift from the Tandon family, which uh, for which we named the school after following their gift. Uh, one of those, uh, the advantages of that is that we were able to continue to invest in research and hire some of the best and brightest faculty in their fields of study. I'm not going to get into this in great depth because I would encourage you to go to the program webpage for the field of study that you're interested in. Uh, but pictured here we have Dr. Mauricio Porfiri who is uh, works in mechanical engineering and robotics as well as several other fields, but he's developed robotic fish that uh, can be used to lead marine life away from sources of pollution to otherwise study what they're doing down there. Uh, another thing that we're very well known for is the 5G uh, research that has happened at the NYU Wireless Lab, which is headed up by Dr. Ted Rappaport, among many other things. This is only a small sampling of the number of different research centers and laboratories that we have at NYU Tandon. And I'm sure Dr. Hossein will speak specifically to some of the work going on in the civil and urban engineering department in just a moment. I mentioned our future labs earlier. We do have four of those, and these functionally are incubators. We have the Data Future Lab, the Digital Future Lab, the Urban Future Lab, which is pictured here and is working on uh, developing the cities of tomorrow, as well as the Veterans Future Lab. Uh, in these four future labs, our students who have an entrepreneurial idea are able to submit a proposal. Uh, if that proposal is accepted, they uh, will receive seed funding, mentorship from both business leaders uh, and faculty members, and be able to uh, acquire office space and administrative support to get their idea off of the ground. To date, uh, we have had a nearly uh, 100, over 100 rather startups launched out of our future labs, creating over 3,200 jobs and having a nearly $4.1 billion impact on the economy of New York City since 2009. Uh, one thing to note for international students is that uh, if you work as a graduate assistant in one of these future labs that does count as on-campus employment uh, for the terms of your student visa, uh, it may feel like you're working in a startup off of campus, but it is for visa purposes and on-campus jobs. So if that is of interest to you, uh, there is an added advantage there. Uh, we're very proud in New York City, of course, of being the city that never sleeps and also being the most populous and dense, most densely populated city in the United States. Uh, New Yorkers speak over 100 different languages and nearly half of New Yorkers speak a language other than English at home. 
And so all in all, we are, as I've mentioned in discussing New York University, a city that celebrates the diversity of people who come from all around the world to make their lives here and improve uh, both our universities and our local economy. Uh, as an NYU Tandon student, I mentioned that we're one of the 20 different colleges of New York University. Uh, this is an advantage to you as a student because if you have an interest in taking coursework outside of uh, the Tandon School of Engineering, uh, most programs will have an elective uh, component built into their curriculum, which would mean that if you, let's say you're a student of management of technology and you'd like to take a course in the NYU Stern School of Business, uh, with the approval of your advisor, you would be able to do so. So uh, you have the advantage of a very large university and all of the different uh, course focuses that uh, come along with that. Uh, we also, of course, being a large university, have a number of high level speakers, uh, student events and uh, academic resources to support you as a student. So again, we are a small to mid sized uh, engineering school, but within a very large university, uh, we provide you with resources that I believe are unparalleled. Most of you, of course, are planning on doing a master's or PhD program to improve your career prospects. We do have two different career offices for our uh, students at the master's and PhD level and undergrad as well. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about the Tandon Office of Career Services, which works specifically, as the name implies, with students uh, at the Tandon School. Uh, they have job coaches there who will work with you, uh, discuss your profile and your career goals, and help to coach you in uh, both the types of jobs you should be looking for to help improve your profile in terms of your resume, uh, LinkedIn, etc., uh, to make you more attractive as a future intern or employee. They also have a, a service called Tandon Connect, which is a job portal which is exclusively available to Tandon students and uh, may help to uh, give you connection to uh, your future job or internship. Additionally, uh, something that I think is a unique service is that uh, these job coaches or career coaches rather will be able to provide assistance in negotiating a job offer and benefits package if you are uh, provided one, which many, the vast majority of our students are. Uh, so many times if you're coming from outside of the United States or if you're from the US and just graduating college, you might not know about the intricacies of uh, job offer negotiation. And so in working with these career coaches, they'll be able to make sure that you are getting uh, the best case scenario for uh, your future job in terms of salary, benefits, et cetera. And so I think that's a service that does give our students a significant advantage in entering the labor market. I mentioned earlier that uh, NYU University has uh, a significant uh, alumni network, many of whom are very well placed throughout the world. Uh, and so the prestige of the university and uh, the fact that perhaps some of these people when hiring will see your resume and recognize the quality of an education that you received at NYU Tandon uh, could be a, an advantage for you. Additionally, we have alumni events and networking opportunities for you to connect with uh, other Tandon alumni, both in New York and around the United States and indeed the world uh, that could help to uh, improve your professional network and uh, provide more job opportunities in the future. We do know that it's going to be um, academically rigorous and investment of your time and funds to come and study with us at NYU Tandon, uh, but we're certain that it is an investment that you will not regret. Uh, one of the ways that we, uh, evidences that we have for that is the 97% career placement rate for our most recent graduates, which means that 97% of our recent graduates were working within their field of study within three months of graduation. Our alumni have a mid-career salary range of $117,000 per year. QS Top Universities has ranked NYU Tandon as number 11 for graduate employability and Payscale ranked us as number four among US engineering schools for salary potential. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about scholarships after the presentation uh, in the Q&A section, but we do provide nearly $25 million annually in scholarships for our master's and PhD students. Uh, hopefully you are interested in applying to one of our programs. Uh, many programs do accept applications for spring. This would be specifically our, our master's program. Um, 
And so if you are interested in starting in January of 2021, you would need to apply and have your required materials to us by November 1st of 2020. Uh, for all PhD programs, they only accept students to begin in the fall, which would be September, um, and those applications would be due by December 1st. Some of our master's programs also have uh, priority deadlines, meaning if you apply sooner, uh, you will receive uh, perhaps better consideration for the program and uh, receive your response uh, as to whether you're admitted or not sooner. Um, so if you're interested in applying priority to one of the programs listed there on the slide, you would need to do so by December 1st of this year, 2020. Uh, all of our other master's programs would require that you submit your application and materials by February 15th of 2021 to begin your coursework in September of 2021. Uh, the application is done online. Uh, generally, we do charge a $75 application fee, uh, but if you go into the chat box at the top, you'll see a link there where you can register to receive more information and we'll also send you an application fee waiver within the next day or so. Uh, you can also use the application checklist uh, through the application portal, which will allow you to keep track of which materials we have received from you and which are still pending. Uh, in most years, we only will accept official transcripts from uh, your undergraduate institution or master's program if you've completed that as well. Now, this year, due to the COVID uh, issue, uh, we are allowing unofficial transcripts to be submitted on a case-by-case -case basis. So if your university is closed or not issuing transcripts for some reason, uh, we would accept a transcript that was issued to you, which is considered then unofficial, uh, for the purpose of evaluating your application. You, of course, will still need to submit official transcripts before you start your studies. Um, one other thing to note is that um, the transcripts, if they are not issued in English, we will require a certified translation of those. Uh, unlike some schools, though, we do not require an external evaluation. We just need your transcript and the translation, and we will then do an evaluation. So you don't need to do uh, WEST as one of the well-known evaluation services. That's not needed, just your transcripts. You will uh, be asked to sit for a GRE, if at all possible. So I mentioned earlier, uh, our average scores are 151 on the verbal side and 164 on the quantitative side. Um, and that would be all PhD programs and the vast majority of our master's programs. This year, uh, GRE, we know, has been somewhat disrupted due to quarantines and test and closures in many areas. Um, so for this year, if you have a compelling reason that you don't have a GRE score, we have a link, a form that you can fill out to request a GRE waiver. We'll review that and uh, evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis. I do encourage you, if at all possible, to take either the GRE test at a testing center or uh, the newly released GRE at home test, which you can take uh, from the comfort of your home as long as you have an internet connection and a webcam. Um, so one of those two options would be best. If not, again, you can apply for that GRE waiver request and we will uh, review that and let you know if it has been approved or not. In terms of English language testing, uh, we generally require TOEFL or IELTS as well as Cambridge or Pearson test of English. Our minimum on the TOEFL is a 90-90 and the minimum on the IELTS overall is 7.0. Uh, this year we have added the Duolingo test of English, which is done fully online and costs only 49 uh, US dollars. Um, so that would be another option for those of you who can't get to a testing center or uh, in areas where the testing centers are not open. So uh, the Duolingo is now being accepted as well. If you are someone who has lived a significant amount of time or completed a degree in a majority English speaking country, uh, you are able to, uh, to rather apply for an English proficiency waiver. Uh, we, like the GRE, will evaluate those waivers on a case by case basis. If you did your undergraduate or a master's degree in, uh, as I mentioned, an English speaking country, uh, we'll automatically waive that. So if let's say you did uh, a master's degree in Canada previously, you would not need to sit for that English proficiency test. Um, any questions on that, I can answer later on. We do require those scores be uh, sent officially 
and all of those testing agencies are still able to send those scores. So uh, unlike the GRE, we will be requiring those or those scores to be sent uh, officially only. You'll need to provide a resume or CV, a statement of purpose, which is just one to two pages about your interest in the program and why you think you would be a good candidate. Two letters of recommendation. Uh, these in most cases should be former uh, professors of yours or someone who uh, supervised you in research. It could also be someone who uh, supervised you in a professional context, meaning a former director or boss or something of that nature. These recommenders can either be added to your application file. You'll put the name, the relationship, and their contact details, and then we will send a link and they'll be able to complete those recommendations online. Um, alternately, they can, your recommenders can email the recommendations to us in electronic form, or uh, if you happen to have a paper letter, those can still be sent as well. If you're applying to a PhD program or master's program, you may want to upload some academic papers, uh, and that is certainly possible as well through the application system, although it is not required. Um, one question that we often get is, will I need to sit for an interview, either electronically or uh, in person? Uh, in most cases, we do not interview students for our MS programs. Uh, for PhD programs, in most cases, you will be contacted by uh, the department faculty to sit for an interview prior to admission. Uh, again, all of these requirements are listed on our website, and you will be able to uh, see the most up-to-date requirements there. Uh, you can always reach out to us as well in the admissions office and we'll be happy to uh, provide that information to you. Uh, at this point, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Hossein to speak on the Civil and Urban Engineering Department. And afterward, uh, I will join him and we will answer the questions for you afterward. Thank you, Corey. Dr. Hossein, take it away. Okay, I, I'm going to um, share my screen now. Okay. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, let me start my presentation over here. Um, I'm Professor Hossein, uh, the uh, industry professor in the Department of Civil and Urban Engineering. Um, and uh, I am also the director of the graduate program in the Department of Civil Engineering. Um, I would like to start my um, conversation just by a little brief overview of our department and uh, tell you a little bit about what's going on in our program. First of all, um, um, as I mentioned, uh, I'm an industry professor here and I teach a number of courses. Um, uh, undergraduate course in introduction to geotechnical engineering and I also uh, teach two graduate courses um, uh, in uh, uh, um, alternative semesters. I teach environmental impact assessment and also environmental geotechnology. Um, nonetheless, uh, for most of our students when they're coming to the civil department, they will uh, all uh, at some point meet with me and we go over students uh, uh, selected courses, program objectives, and make sure that the courses that they are taking uh, will satisfy uh, their degree program requirement and also students' objective in terms of what uh, they are uh, trying to achieve from their degrees. This is uh, um, uh, a little bit about our uh, mission statement, our department. The department head is Professor Magid Skanda. Uh, traditionally, I believe, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, civil engineering, uh, Egyptians have a very strong background in civil engineering. We all know that. Dr. Iskander himself is from Egypt. Um, I believe he did his bachelor and master degree in Alexandria University, and then he completed his PhD at the University of Texas at Austin. He's the chair of the department. He's the director of our geotechnical program. Uh, he has published a number of uh, um, books and uh, 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 numerous articles. Um, uh, incidentally, a number of our PhD students in geotechnical engineering are from Egypt right now in the department that uh, they're helping me in some of my research and as well as uh, teaching material for my undergraduate course. Dr. Skander uh, has a 
open door policy is meeting with all of the students is uh, usually available in the department and uh, every student that they're joining our program will have a chance to sit down with him and talk about their program objectives here's a bit about our civil engineering uh, um, we're not as old as in civil engineering and especially geotechnical engineering in egypt but uh, one of the oldest engineering uh, civil engineering program in, in the united states is uh, in brooklyn uh, we are uh, the house of the uh, old brooklyn uh, polytechnic and uh, currently Tandana School of Engineering. Just a little bit about the different degrees that we are offering. We are offering a master degree and PhD in several areas under the umbrella of civil engineering. We have a master degree in civil engineering with different concentrations that I will describe a little bit later. We also offer a program, a master degree in construction management. We have a master in environmental engineering uh, master in environmental science, uh, particularly for the applicants that they do not have the engineering background, but they have interest in environmental science program. We have one of the oldest and one of the best well-known transportation program in the country. Uh, we offer uh, two different master degrees in transportation management and transportation planning and engineering. And we have a master degree in urban infrastructure systems. Uh, we believe that uh, being in New York City, one of the greatest cities in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the world and uh, a great laboratory in terms of urban infrastructure, uh, what we have uh, learned from uh, you know, over 100 years of infrastructure planning and construction and what we can uh, learn in terms of lesson learned not to make the same mistakes someplace else for all of the big cities that are developing around the world that we can learn that through the master degree in urban infrastructure systems we are also offering two doctoral degree program one in civil engineering related to any of the subjects that we just discussed whether it is related to construction transportation geotechnical structural engineering uh, and also a phd uh, degree in transportation engineering so all of these master degrees program, we offer seven different master degree program, but also the very first one that I mentioned was master degree in civil engineering. Our students in uh, master degree in civil engineering can have a concentrations in also um, six different areas. That could be structural engineering, uh, geotechnical engineering, construction management engineering, uh, environmental and water resources engineering, transportation engineering, and so forth. So uh, how do we um, um, plan our study for students to achieve their goals is that if a student is in master degree program for civil engineering with any of those concentrations that we just talked about, um, they must complete, oh, to begin with, all of our master degree programs are 30 credits and almost all of our courses are three credits each which translate to uh, approximately 30 uh, 10 courses and uh, this could be also include eight courses plus six credits of thesis or nine courses plus three credits of a project to work with one of the professors in the area of the research uh, uh, not an in-depth requirement of a thesis, but for one-term work of a project. So generally, the master program in civil engineering consists of uh, 12 credits of core courses. We would like to have uh, four courses, basically, from a total of six courses. Here's the list of core courses that we are offering. Students are going to be taking all of the students will take four out of these six courses this is a basic knowledge no matter what area of uh, civil engineering you want to concentrate we believe is required knowledge for the civil engineers material for civil engineering instrumentation and monitoring this is a geotechnical course for civil engineers environmental impact assessment uh, the course that I teach and uh, uh, that is looking at the impact of our projects in um, society at large. We're looking at 
urban infrastructure systems, project management for construction, and risk analysis. After students select uh, 12 credits, four courses out of the list of six, which everybody shares that, then students can concentrate on the area of concentration, take all of their courses. Let's say if you're a structural engineer or geotechnical engineer or uh, want to uh, concentrate in environmental or water resources, you can take the remaining courses within that discipline. Uh, we offer up to two courses, six credits of technical electives. These electives are allowing the students to tailor the program a little bit towards the, uh, their own specific objectives. Let's say someone has interest in um, business and management on top of their engineering degree. Well, uh, being as a part of NYU, a very large university, we have uh, opportunities for our students, let's say, to go to Stern School of Business and take two courses in business or management uh, with Stern faculty. We have uh, a School of uh, Urban Science and Progress that the students can go and take data analytics courses. Uh, some students are very interested in programming or machine learning that are courses within our computer science or computer engineering, electrical engineering. They're all offering courses and machine learning that the students can take. And of course, as I mentioned, the six credits allowing some of the students who are interested in research uh, to get involved in thesis for six credits, usually divided in two terms and uh, or a project which is going to be related to um, either uh, an industry project or uh, research theoretical uh, work uh, work for, which is usually worth at about three credits so uh, this is going to allow students to take their uh, area of concentration by taking 12 to 18 credits within the area of concentration if you're interested let's say in the structural engineering in addition to your core courses but some students that they're coming directly into the program and they want to do a, um, a master's de degree in construction management they don't need to do those core 12 credit core courses they can take all of the 30 credits uh, in the area of construction management and have a master's degree in construction management similarly uh, environmental engineering transportation planning and engineering if you're doing a master's degree in those areas yeah, and then you do not need to go through the program of uh, 12 credits or core courses, and you can take all of the 30 credits within the area of a specialization. So that's a general overview of our program. In terms of our faculty, I just wanted to um, uh, hear if I can um, move this a little bit away, um, just um, share with you question is okay I wanted to take you uh, to our department web page uh, and just show you if when you go to uh, our website uh, you can go to our academic program you go to the civil and urban engineering and here you have tremendous amount of information about uh, the graduate program the research that we do the different type of laboratories that we have I wanted just to share with you briefly a little bit about our faculty. When you go to the faculty page, you have uh, every faculty listed and their area of research and the laboratory that they're working with. Um, Dr. Skandar, we talked about a little bit before, um, uh, just by looking at um, his website and the type of research that he does. And this has become particularly important for PhD students when they are interested in a, a particular subject to explore uh, uh, who in the faculty is doing research in that area and what is the active area of research within the program. Professor Chow over here, he is in our um, um, Center for Transportation. He is a professor of transportation engineering and he does a lot of research with regard to um, uh, connected vehicles. Uh, professor Chirelli is an industry professor. He is in charge of our program in construction management. 
Um, incidentally, today I just got an email that both Professor Semiha Ergin and Chen Feng, they received a very large NSF grant uh, with regard to uh, artificial intelligence in robotics with regard to modular construction. Uh, Professor Ergin is teaching building information management system and Professor Chen is in construction management robotics and the work that they do. Um, then Masood Landahari, he is doing uh, research in structural and uh, uh, sensors and uh, artificial intelligence in terms of structural health. Um, Professor Jen is uh, also in transportation. Um, I'm just briefly reviewing Professor Liefer is a, a geotechnical engineer as well as looking at data analytics and informatics as far as uh, um, um, city development is concerned. Professor Jin is doing uh, material and uh, alternative materials uh, in civil engineering. Professor Khan Osbey is the head of our transportation program. So, um, Professor Silverman is in environmental engineering, Jennifer Apple is in environmental engineering, and Ronan is in water resources. Uh, by going through the program and website, you can find a lot of information about uh, our program altogether. Let's go back to our uh, Presentation over here, this is just a snapshot of our department course offering for this coming fall. Uh, as you can see that we offer a number of classes, these are graduate classes only, uh, in different area of concentration. Let's say for structural engineering, we have four courses listed for this term, environmental water resources, uh, geotechnical, urban infrastructure over here, uh, transportation and construction management. So every term we are offering a series of courses for our students. In addition to this, as I said, the students with their uh, ability to take advantage of electives within their program can select courses from other departments or other schools of NYU. And this is helping them to tailor the degree a little bit more towards their own objectives. Occasionally we offer um, some sort of courses for, uh, that is uh, of immense interest to students. This past summer, um, NYU decided to offer a course uh, in machine learning uh, to all of our newly admitted students for fall 2020 uh, uh, without any charge. Students were taking this course over the summer and uh, before even starting their program in fall, basically they had secured three credits free of uh, any expenses in machine learning, which would have been considered as an elective course uh, towards their degree program. So this is just in a snapshot of our program. Um, my email is on the website. Uh, if any of you is inter has interest in civil engineering, uh, can contact me directly. In terms of uh, PhD students, uh, if anybody's uh, in the group interested in PhD, as I mentioned, it is important for you to study what type of research is going on in the department uh, before deciding just to submit your application. I would strongly recommend that students when they identify the faculty in an area of research that interests them, start communication with the faculty. And then uh, uh, with building this type of background and introduction, submitting your application, uh, knowing that what kind of work is being done in the department. So at this point, I think I uh, concluded my uh, presentation and um, I can stop sharing my um, um, uh, screen and then allowing Corey to take over in terms of research. Uh, question and answer, sorry. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Hossein. I think that was definitely valuable for students interested in those types of programs. Uh, we did have a question. Um, could you give us your opinion on students who are applying uh, to a, a PhD program with a bachelor's degree and, and the advantages or disadvantages of that? Um, we generally prefer our um, 
PhD applicants to have uh, a master's degree. And the reason for that is uh, PhD overall um, is an independent study. Um, PhD in our program consists of 75 credits. 30 of these credits is from a master's degree program. So for students who have a master's degree, they already receive 30 credits towards the 75 required PhD. That leaves them with 24 credits of coursework in order to prepare them for two objectives. One is going to be prepare them for the research that they want to do to allow them to sit down for the qualifying examination. Uh, once the students are passing their qualifying examination, they have completed their 24 credits, they embark on their research. The research is a minimum of 21 credits. Our PhD usually can be done within three and a half to four and a half years. So for this, that is for the student who has a master's degree. Students who do not have a master's degree, we basically look for a very strong background in research. There are some, uh, we do have a number of uh, PhD students that they came in directly from their bachelor. So they have to do uh, 54 credits of course for 30 credits because they didn't transfer a master. So there's an uh, additional way to uh, learn the theoretical subject in the uh, discipline of a classroom. And then in order to be considered, they have to show uh, uh, strong research, uh, you know, within their uh, uh, bachelor degree education. Some students are get involved with the research, they get involved into publications, and that evidence is there and uh, we occasionally have accepted the students, but the preferred way is for the students to go through the graduate program, to get a master's degree, to get involved in research, and therefore once they're coming to a PhD program, uh, they are able to manifest that independent studies within the research area, whether it is experimental work, whether it is computational work, uh, that is to require a level of uh, uh, background in familiarity with research and subject area. For that matter, we prefer a master degree, but we have considered the bachelor, strong student with a bachelor degree. Right, right, yeah, which was, thank you for elaborating on that. So um, generally, again, if you are interested, it is possible, but you're going to be competing against students as well who already have that master's degree. So uh, in many cases, it is much more difficult. Uh, is it recommended to contact professors before applying to a PhD? And the answer for that would be yes, uh, especially if you are able to identify a professor who is doing research that matches up with your future research interests. We do encourage you to go ahead and uh, reach out to them uh, online. If you are unable to identify any professor in the program of study that you are uh, looking at, uh, you can always contact the academic advisor and they may be able to direct you to one of the faculty members who uh, could potentially have a research match with you. Uh, Dr. Hussain, do you want to add anything there? No, that's perfect. As you said, it will be very beneficial for students to identify a faculty who is involved in an active research in the area of their interest uh, before just submitting an application and waiting here. PhD has to show that ability of communicating involvement in research, involvement in a department, um, and all of this is uh, required basically for the applicants. Right. Um, there's a question here. Can I apply after my first year of engineering college in my country? So I don't know if you're referring to undergraduate or graduate. Uh, if you're referring to undergraduate, yes, transfer applications are possible. Uh, and I unfortunately don't work directly with undergraduate students, although all of that information is on NYU's website. Uh, for master's degree programs, transfer credit is sometimes granted. There's a maximum of nine credits that can be granted uh, for master's degree transfer. It is uh, subject to approval of the department. Um, Mohsen, do you have anything you can add on, on master's transfer and how that process is carried out? Yeah, well, uh, there's one important aspect for everyone to know. If you have completed a degree at another institution, you cannot transfer any of that credit towards another degree. So in another word, we don't want to double count a course. However, let's say you have started in an institution, but you have not completed. If the courses that you have taken are generally not more than 10 years old, because science is moving, so more than 10 years is going to be perhaps even obsolete, uh, 
You can request transfer, but as Cody said, uh, the maximum number of transfer credits is nine credits because we have a residency requirement which consists of at least 21 credits within the department or within the school uh, for students to graduate. Great. So um, for scholarships, uh, quickly, all of our students who are admitted to master's degrees are considered for merit-based scholarships at the time of admission. So if you've been admitted into a master's degree program, we are going to look at your uh, undergraduate and perhaps master's GPA if you've done uh, a master's previously. Um, we're also going to look at your GRE score and a few other parts of your application. And then along with your letter of admission, it'll say congratulations, you've been admitted and tell you uh, what scholarship you have been awarded per year. The maximum of our master's degree scholarships is around 40% the cost of tuition. Um, in addition to scholarships at the master's degree level, you would have the chance to work as a graduate assistant. Uh, at the master's level, a graduate assistantship functionally is on campus work in one of our administrative offices uh, or one of the academic departments somewhere on the campus of the university. Uh, if you are working at the master's level as a graduate assistant at Tandon, you will be paid generally around $20 per hour for up to 20 hours maximum of work per week. Um, so uh, theoretically, you could make around 10, 8, 10, max probably $12,000 per year to help with your living expenses. At the PhD level, most of our PhD candidates will receive uh, partial or in most cases full tuition waivers and also uh, some type of teaching or research assistantship. So uh, teaching assistantships at Tandon are reserved for PhD students. Uh, that's not the same at all US universities, but at Tandon only PhD students are able to serve as teaching assistants or TAs um, and research assistantships as well are generally reserved for PhD candidates. Um, there's a question here, Dr. Hussein, I think would be best for you. It says, what are the opportunities to work as a civil engineer in the U.S. after completing a Ph.D.? Well, um, along answering this question and uh, just add to what Corey was describing, we have an internship program in our department for our graduate students right, right. Uh, that uh, after completing a minimum of two semesters, with us to be in the country basically for one year that's a immigration requirement uh, students are eligible to apply for an internship the way it works is that our students they uh, find a job and then uh, they apply uh, for the internship they earn half a credit for the internship that they take most of the students they take summer internship after uh, two semester with us and they get uh, you know some work experience and they also earn half a credit for the work that they have done now in terms of job opportunities well um, as Corey said in his own presentation majority of our students within three months they're getting a job uh, by providing the opportunity for internship, we've been able to help our own students, our international students, to um, obtain an internship job, which is generally an easier approach for employer. Um, they do not have to go through any form of immigration sponsorship or anything to hire students to work for them. Once the students have been involved in a uh, work of a company, they have become familiar with the work with the uh, employ uh, other employers, it becomes a better uh, match for the employer to select the students for additional job opportunities. Overall, uh, the, uh, being that we are in New York City in a very big urban center, and particularly for civil engineers, uh, we have been um, uh, 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 very successful with our graduates all find job. I personally do not know any of our graduates who, had, who has not been able to find a job. For international students, obviously, we do have the issue of uh, work permit and all of those issues related to immigration purposes, which we believe that internship is not only allow the students to work, apply their uh, knowledge uh, to uh, uh, real world scenarios, uh, go from abstract classroom learning into the practical aspect of the knowledge, learn from people that they are in the field and they're applying the technology, and also establish that network that is needed in order to 
apply for a job afterwards. I'm sure Corey perhaps can also talk about uh, OPT after graduation for our international students who is allowing them to go to work. Right, yeah. so if you uh, complete a graduate program in a STEM field in the US, you will uh, qualify for up to 27 months of what is known as optional practical training or OPT. You'll heard reference many times. Um, and this means that you can work uh, as an intern, but many times as a paid intern at a U.S. company for up to 27 months after you graduate from, uh, again, a STEM program at which all of the Tandon graduate programs are considered. Um, quickly here, there's a question um, from, I'm hoping I don't mispronounce your name, but uh, Shad, the question about undergraduate admissions. Uh, I uh, don't work with undergraduate students directly, but I put a link to NYU undergraduate admissions uh, and you can learn more about that application there. I would encourage you to reach out to NYU undergraduate admission specifically because uh, I don't think I'm qualified to speak on that directly. There's a question here um, uh, for Dr. Hossein, I believe, what would perhaps be a number of uh, publications to be a competitive candidate for a PhD program? Is there a magic number or is it a case by case basis? It is case by case basis. It is uh, based on the quality of the publications. It is uh, based on where the uh, article has appeared. It is not the only criteria uh, that we are looking at. It's one of the, uh, you know, uh, criteria in terms of uh, 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 assessing an application. It is uh, depending on who is your advisor and uh, you know generally what type of research is being done. So it's a holistic approach to an application. It's not just counting the numbers. Even in your future uh, research and professional development, it is not the numbers that is matter, it's the quality of that that it matters. So we understand as a student, you might be second author, third author, first author, you know, in fourth author, depending on how many people were involved. It's always the quality that it matters. Uh, we, uh, as you, you know, most of you have heard that we are living in a very small world. It's a village. We all know each other. Your professor, let's say in the Department of Civil Engineering at, uh, uh, you know, any of the universities that you're involved with, I might have read their papers. They might have read my paper. And for that matter, we know each other's. And, uh, you know, we're looking at who did you work with? Where did you publish? What was the subject matter? And, uh, you know, all of these are going to help to determine uh, the uh, future potential for the research. Along with that, on, for PhD opportunities, um, there's a question here. Is there a way to know if there's an open opportunity in a lab or to work with a uh, professor as a research assistant or how is that handled generally? Um, we generally don't um, have, um, uh, generally speaking, we don't have uh, that uh, program to announce that, you know, we have an opportunity in such and such laboratory or for research. Um, we accept, uh, we receive a lot of application for a doctoral program. We accept very few every year, but those that we accept generally, they come in under a School of Engineering fellowships or Dean's Fellow that for uh, they can, uh, they are receiving their tuition remissions and they're receiving their stipend and therefore they're gonna be allocated to a specific research. That's why I mentioned it is important for you to communicate with the faculty, to identify whose work has been inspired you to apply to us. So for that matter, if the faculty also find your application amongst the number of application that faculty has received, we always have a, a faculty meeting. We go over uh, our PhD application. We take group decision based on PhD applications. And once we determine out of, let's say, uh, 10 applications for a specific uh, faculty and research that that uh, faculty is involved with, and we have only two slots available to take two additional students, that's how that communication that you had is going to come into effect. That's how we are putting the uh, type of research that you have done, uh, uh, you know, in our uh, decision making um, process. So we don't usually uh, announce if we have an uh, available slot in a laboratory or a research program, but we are interested to find who is interested in that research. And then we can select from 
uh, and that would be serve you better too, rather than just trying to find where the, you know, some research availability is and put yourself in there rather than at the level of doctoral study, you must know exactly why you're doing that level of a study. Four or five years of your uh, life and energy is going to be allocated uh, to a specific, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, concentrated area of research. So that you must be really interested in that subject. And I believe that once you know who is doing what and communicate with them, it helps you to also find the right advisor for your own research and doctoral study. All right. And um, there's another question following up with that. Um, it says, the question is, will the grant be partially or fully funded? My impression is that it could be partial or full funding Pending. I, when you mean grant in this question, I'm not sure if that refers to a scholarship or teaching or research assistantship. Um, yeah, I'm not certain. Um, Shad, could you, are you referring to a scholarship or uh, teaching and research assistantship? Put that in the uh, question box if you have a chance. Um, do we have any other questions at the moment? We um, circling back minutes. to the same issue, there was a second part to an earlier question regarding separate applications for being teacher's assistant or research assistant as well. I think that would reflect on chat question for partial or full funding. Is there a separate application for these positions or are they granted based on the application? So um, in most cases, the faculty, and, and Dr. Hossein, correct me if I'm wrong, when they are reviewing a PhD applicant, they will be thinking about the different teaching and research assistantship needs that they have, and generally that will be conveyed in an award letter uh, after admission. That's correct. Um, we are admitting the students basically either on School of Engineering Fellowship uh, usually those students will be involved in uh, some level of teaching uh, in a, a laboratory. Uh, let's say, um, uh, as I mentioned before, I teach geotechnical engineering and I always have uh, uh, up to two of our PhD students working in the lab with me, not only on the research, but also in uh, running the geotechnical uh, laboratory, soil mechanics, uh, conducting the experiments, um, answering the students' questions, and that is part of their uh, School of Engineering Fellowships. There is also another different type of scholarships that is going to be related to a professor's grant. So if a professor, for example, I just mentioned that we had an artificial intelligence in uh, robotics for construction. So um, the uh, both professors Ergen and Professor Chen are going to be um, very active for the next couple of years uh, on this type of research. They're going to get the students that they have some background both in artificial in intelligence, civil engineering, and construction management to get involved in the research. So those the students for three, four years are going to be covered with the grant that is individual professor has received. It has nothing to do with uh, the School of Engineering fellowship that we offer. So there are two type of fellowships. Students with the School of Engineering fellowship will have some teaching responsibilities. Students with individual grant from a professor or faculty will work on their research uh, in addition to their courses and, uh, you know, study that they have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so to sum it up a bit, um, for the PhD level, things are, are really uh, personalized. Each PhD candidate will have uh, their own situation. At the master's degree level, to go back to that, uh, again, we have merit-based scholarships available to all admitted master's degree students, and those are up to 40% the cost of tuition. So it is a partial scholarship at the master's degree level. And again, as a master's student, you would have the ability to work as a graduate assistantship as a graduate assistant rather on campus uh, during your master's degree to help to fund your cost of living expenses. And I, if I may add for our master level of students, we always for all of our courses that we teach, we look at our <clears throat> master's students with strong background and that particular subject. Let's say in, again, back in geotechnical, I'm looking for a master's student with a strong background in geotechnical engineering to help me grade my uh, 
assignment papers, uh, you know, answer questions and work with the students in the undergraduate class, help them to understand the subject, help them with their assignments. So those are the uh, uh, type of graduate assistantships that we offer to our master level students. Brilliant. All right. Um, well, Lee, do you have any other questions that you think we should go over before we uh, finish um, up here? I do not think so. I just wanted to thank you, gentlemen, for your time and uh, bringing to us this brilliant example of graduate studies in general. I know that this is applicable to any other uh, institution as well in the U.S. The process of reaching out to professors, researching the university's website as a first step anybody who is interested in master's degree, a PhD uh, as well, to know what areas they're working on, uh, if there are any available positions currently, you would get a rough idea in the beginning, definitely from the website, and then communicating with the professors is definitely essential. And I'm glad that we had Dr. Hussain today to display how important this is and to present an example uh, through the Canton School of Engineering and specifically civil engineering as well. I myself am a civil engineering graduate from Ain Shams University here in Egypt and I can attest to everything of importance that was displayed today regarding the major, regarding the new fields, regarding how science can be obsolete after 10 years, for example. Uh, so keeping uh, yourself up to date with what's going on within your field is definitely the second part that you need to work on after um, researching your options with the university and the professors as well. And I think the questions have covered most of the usually or frequently asked questions as well. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to add anything uh, for our students? I would just like to say uh, thank you all again for attending. I put my email in the chat box. Uh, do feel free to reach out with me to me with any admissions questions or general questions about Tandon. If I don't have the information, I will put you in contact with the correct person. And again, uh, thank you, Walid and Education USA Egypt for organizing this. And uh, a special thank you to Dr. Hussain for helping to uh, give the faculty side of things and talk about civil and urban engineering. Thank you all, Walid. It was very nice meeting you. You um, as well, sir. Thank you. Yeah. It was nice meeting everybody else and I hope to see your applications when it's come true. Hopefully. Okay. All right, Thank everyone. You. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. <clears throat>